The following is a 45 TV sports presentation. TV. Shot, runner, up. Track star steals it, lays it in. At the buzzer. It's a brand new door play to kick off the start of the second half. Look at that. Slaughter turned that up a notch and McGorry all the way down stops and puts a left hand around. For coffee to strength back to her system. Good teamwork, nice passing. Elk for three. Saturday rolls on here at Target Center on 45 TV. It's a girls' state basketball tournament. We have the Clash 3A final between Red Wing and De La Salle. And then the season finale for girls' basketball, Hopkins and Bloomington Kennedy tonight in Class 4A. De La Salle looking for a three-beat Red Wing, hoping to upset their way to what would be a first-ever state championship in girls' basketball. Thanks for tuning in tonight, everybody. I'm Chris Long here at Coastside, along with Jenny Johnson and Marissa Layton. We missed two pretty good ones earlier today. We're hoping for two good ones tonight. Jenny, as we look ahead tonight, what are your thoughts? Well, I think De La Salle is probably the favorite going into the game. But, Chris, you just said it. Red Wing could win their first state championship, and that is enough to give them an edge. Marissa? You know, De La Salle, they're looking for their third straight state cha championship. They're 27-4 and four this season with all four of their losses coming to other state tournament teams. So I think this team has experience. They're going to look for the victory tonight. Let's show you how these two teams got here. Red Wing game, uh, came through the semifinals thanks to Tisha Buck. Scored 18 points. She is their leading scorer. They got by Richfield 62-51. That game a lot closer than the score indicated, Jenny. Oh, absolutely. And it was a physical one. Tisha Buck was, and you know, no one really had an answer for her in that one. Marissa, an unlikely hero for De La Salle. We know about their stars. We'll talk about them. But Patience Griffin, six, three-pointer. I think she came in off the bench, and just like you said, just like her name says, she was patient. She gave them a huge boost off the bench. De La Salle looking for the three-peat Red Wing, looking to shock the state here in the Clash 3A semifinals. We'll continue our countdown tour tip-off after this Red Wing and De La Salle for the 3A title. The pregame show is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today for amazing specials during Toyota's number one for everyone sales event. On a sun-filled St. Patrick's Day in downtown Minneapolis, we get to the night session here tonight, and we look forward to this one. De La Salle, a known commodity. Some of their players have been to their fifth state tournament tonight against Red Wing, a bit of an unknown out of the Minnesota Conference, Leah. It's going to be a great matchup. De La Salle brings their trademark defense. Red Wing is a team that can get up and down. They're going to want to sit in the half court. I think it's going to be a fun game. Let's take a look at a couple of players that will make a difference tonight. All right, for Red Wing, we're looking at Tisha Buck. She's a six-foot senior. And boy, has she been terrific in this tournament. She had 32 points in the quarterfinals. She is confident, and she's going to do well in this game for Red Wings. They'll need her to. And De La Salle has Alina Starr. She has been in this spot a lot in her career. She's a fantastic athlete, but she needs to play fierce basketball on the defensive end. Tonight's key player is brought to you by Polymet, a mining company with plans to open a modern, safe, copper, nickel, precious metals mine in northeastern Minnesota. Learn more. PolyMetMining.com. Let's meet the Wingers and the Islanders as they play for the Class 3A Championship with public address announcer Dave Giles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to Target Center to the 2013 Minnesota State High School Girls Basketball Tournament and Championship Saturday. This is the Class 3A State Championship game. 
and it features the Section 1 champion with a record of 23 and 7, the Wingers from Red Wing High School. And the Section 3 champion with a record of 27 and 4, the Islanders from De La Salle High School, located in Minneapolis. Let's meet the starting lineups for this championship game. They will be introduced alternately starting with Red Wing. At forward, a 5.8-inch sophomore, number 13, Mackenzie Mulkin. <laughs> At forward for De La Salle, a 5.10-inch senior, number 20, Claire Thomas. <laughs> At forward for the wingers, a 5.8-inch senior, number 25, Macy Kelly. At forward for the Islanders, a 5 foot 10 inch senior, number 22, Kaishana Johnson. At guard for Red Wing, a 5 foot 7 inch junior, number 11, Kara Norvet. At forward for De La Salle, a, a six-foot sophomore, number 25, Taylor Tony. At guard for the wingers, a six-foot senior, number 12, Tisha Buck. At center for the Islanders, a six foot one inch senior, number 15, Natalie Yule. At guard for Red Wing, a five foot eight inch senior, number 22, McKenna Schaefer. And at guard for De La Salle, a five foot 10 inch senior, number three, Alina Starr. The Red Wing assistant coaches are Jesse Nelson and John Bomback. The head coach of the Red Wing Wingers is Dave Mulkin. The De La Salle assistant coaches are John Patterson and Ty Ray Ross. The head coach of the De La Salle Islanders is Faith Johnson Patterson. The officials for the Class 3 championship game are Deb Weinrice of Eden Prairie, Ron Alston of Rochester, and Matt Dornfeld of Woodbury. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you please rise, remove your hats, and face the flag. The national anthem this evening will be sung by Mevi Wynn. She is a sophomore from Richfield High School. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright
Leave a win of Richfield. Very nice on our national anthem. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. Together, we save. Well, getting ready to kick things off here at Target Center in 3A with De La Salle and Red Wing. I think it's going to be a really great matchup. They're pushing the ball. Red Wing can get up and down the court pretty well, and De La Salle is going to want to play that style. So it'll be interesting to see who gets to do what and how Red Wing can slow down De La Salle and how they establish Tisha Buck who has been fantastic in this tournament. De La Salle representing the Tri Metro and out of the Minnesota the Red Wing wingers with Chan Hansen, Lupre, Shakopee, Chaska, Northfield, all the Angels and Farmington. The Tri Metro went all those teams. There's a lot of them in the Tri Metro. So De La Salle over to Claire Thomas to start this game. The senior right down to the low post and back out. Alina Starr. That is Thomas right there looking down low. Nothing. That's what's the perimeter. Inside Alina Starr and in her fifth state tournament. She hits it. Finally a senior. <laughs> yeah that's right. We've been watching her since eighth grade. But it's a nice quick start for De La Salle. No jitters on the offensive end. Taylor Tony picks off the Aaron pass. Starr going to take a right to the hoop. And that's a problem right there for Red Wing. Alina Starr is so physically strong, you can't let her attack the basket. Macy Kelly down in the corner, back to Malkin. That is Tisha Buck there. A long cross-court pass on the way and not going to go. Rebound, De La Salle, and then tied up by Macy Kelly. Possession arrow goes to Red Wing. Let's take a look at the game plan brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Red Wing's going to need to handle the pressure that De La Salle's going to put on and get some rebounds to slow things down. De La Salle, attack defense, that's what they're known for, and pushing the pace. If they can run, they will. This is Macy Kelly. She'll give you 15 points a game. Got to get her involved in the offense tonight. That's Tisha Buck. She's a good one. She's had a good tournament so far. Really athletic, strong. She's a long body, so she can pass over you, shoot over you. She's got good delivery on her shot. That one won't go, and that might be over the back right there on Mackenzie Malkin. Yeah. A quick first foul. Islanders with the early lead and the basketball. Patience Griffin in quickly in the game. You want to leave her outside of the arc for too long. Natalie Yule, ball knocked out of her hands behind her by Buck. Here comes Macy Kelly, the senior, 5'8, guarded by Claire Thomas. Nice spinner right into the lane. And that's where rebounding becomes so important. You need a couple of chances, in particular when you first start out, you're not hitting your easy shots. Alina Starr, Thomas, Starr. You can see the defensive setup there for Red Wing against this very quick De La Salle Islander team. Also good outside shooters. Natalie's got Thomas wide open. The 10-foot jumper is perfect. Look by Claire Thomas. Tisha Buck not able to get there in time. Assist to Yule, spotting her teammate wide open. De La Salle out to an early lead. Tisha Buck with the basketball. One of the better players in the state stops and pops. Natalie Yule with the board. Outlet Alina Starr. Tony, free throw line. And they swarm that rebound. And it causes a turnover. Natalie Yule picks it up. Here comes Starr trying to figure out what she's going to do. Tony, good catch on a high pass. Gets it right back. She's got the three if she wants it. Won't take it. Starr guarded by Kelly. Or take that back by Schaefer, rather. Thomas Yule. And then picked off by McKenna Schaefer. A couple of turnovers by each team. Red Wings Macy Kelly. That's Kara Norvet. Down low, trying to run with it. Malkin. And a step. Time out on the court. Six nothing Islanders out to an early lead in the state championship basketball game. The first half is brought to you by Park Nicollet Melrose Institute. 
Join the Bayou Movement at Facebook.com slash Bayou Melrose. Back at the Target Center, Islanders all over Red Wing early in this one, up six to nothing. Well, tonight, De La Salle is trying to be the first team since Minneapolis North three-peated back in 03, 04, and 05. Incidentally, those teams were also coached by Faith Johnson Patterson. She has recently eclipsed the 400 win mark, and tonight, with one more win, she'll have her eighth state championship, which ties her with Rochester Lured legend Myron Glass for the most ever in Minnesota high school girls basketball. Dave, the only other team to three-peat was New York Mills, and we were just talking about that. It'd be nice to have them back for nostalgia's sake. You know, we saw Tori mention that. We saw in the game prior to this, one of Janet Carvin's long-lasting records went down today. Carly Wagner of NRHEG smashed a ton of records today. I don't know how many she set, four or eight or whatever it was. She had 50 points in the game previous to this. And one of the records she broke was Kelly Skalicki, one of Kelly Skalicki's records who played, I believe, in the 80s with Albany. was one of the great names here at the State High School Tournament. So we saw a game of historic proportions here the game prior to this. And then Dolman popped in 32. It was really a fun game to watch. Star shot is knocked out to the corner. That's Tony with the basketball. Right back to Alina. Red Wing looking for their first state championship. And you had, a, you had a nice long conversation with Dave Malkin earlier. Yeah, he is such a class act. Really fun to talk to him before the game. Patience Griffith getting a Griffin getting your own rebound. Ewell. Well, Thomas right there. They're uh, relentless right now to start this basketball game. Star long distance dialing. Tie up. Possession arrow. Red one. Closed captioning is brought to you by Warner Stellion, Minnesota's appliance specialist. Yeah, Coach Mulkin said, you know, I, I don't mind pushing the ball at all, but I'd love to sit in their half court because I think we have a better chance than throughout this entire game. We didn't see Tyshana Johnson until now. She's back in there. He's a missed basketball candidate traveling. The other thing Coach Mulkin told me is that we cannot turn over the ball a lot in this game. So we just can't allow them to take advantage of our turnovers. D. LaSalle, the Islanders. Powerful season this year. Patience Griffin. Yeah, she gets a rhythm look out. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. She's she's cold hearted out there. She's not gonna worry about it. She'll shoot that if she's got it. The wingers still won't go. Nine-nothing De La Salle. Alina Starr makes sure it's one and done. Foul. McKenna Schaefer. Yeah, this De La Salle team is dangerous in a few different ways, but when you have someone like Griffin, who can come in and hit big three-pointers. You have Starr, who can attack the basket. And, and Johnson and Thomas, I mean, they just have a lot of different options scoring-wise. Little encouragement from her friend Taylor Tony, a sophomore on this team. Alina gets the second of two. 10 nothing. De La Salle early on in this state championship game. There is Tisha Buck, Macy Kelly. And they're on the board with the trade. And a turnover. Oh, no, the winners almost lost that. Now feed to Kelly. No shot there. Back to the top. Norvette's going to take it in. That's rejected by Thomas, but she got it back. Schaefer, Norvette underneath Kelly. Got all five points. Very nice job by Norvette. Held her composure. And another turnover. Where you see how De La Salle can make oh. it so difficult for you. Time out on the court. De La Salle's 10 0 lead all of a sudden cut in half. Quickly, 11 51 here in the 3 A state championship game. In the third place game, Richfield beat Monticello 64 39. Faith Johnson Patterson, head coach at De La Salle. 
state championship so you can see what she did when she was at Minneapolis North. And now what she's done at De La Salle 2011 and 2012. I've watched her coach for many, many years. I've been in her locker room and she is one. She has an incredible basketball sense. She understands the game so well, but what she does that I like is she's so good with the girls. She understands them. She's hard on them. She works them. Yet she also was kind of the mentoring mom. So it's an exhausting job. She does it well. Red Wing, the wingers. Fresh off a great win over Richfield the other night. Yeah, that was a great game. Buck, she can throw the ball really hard and fast, as fast as anybody I've seen. Got a quick delivery. She's got the height and that reach to do it over the top of people. Yeah, she's got a lot of length. She's got a perfect basketball body. She's strong. There's an alley oop to Buck. Oh boy, that's not a fall you want. Remember, she got in foul trouble. Was she out in the, she, yeah, well, she was sitting on the bench and for the Richfield game. I'm so glad I didn't wear that Burger King outfit earlier today. <laughs> I'm just happy that the banana's here. Yeah, the banana finally making an appearance today out of the state tournament. I don't know when it became a tradition, but it did. <laughs> D. LaSalle, and patience will shoot another three. And then a foul on the rebound, Tyshana Johnson gets it. Tyshana's had a nice turn. He had 16 in the first game, 15 in the second. Oh, get the basket. It's all positioning right there. You gotta box someone out so you don't get stuck behind them. Well, 13 to 5 now. Red Wing had some momentum going there. They're gonna try to get it back right here. Tisha Buck. Tisha Buck with two quick fouls. Shot on the way. There she is. She got it. She's very expressive after she shoots. You'll see that as yeah. you saw right there. I like the excitement that she brings to the game. Red one having an on awesome season. Buck gets it after being fed by Schaefer. She's got a two on two. She'll stop and pop. It's a nice option. Four point game. Ten and a half to go. You see a lot of dribble drive attacking the basket in this game, but not a lot of stop and pop. Tony with a good rebound, then a tie up. As Mackenzie Malkin got her hands in there. Time out on the court, 10 20 more. When we come back, De LaSalle maintains control here at the State 3A Championship game. Tonight's fan cam being brought to you by 45 TV. Dog. He's back. <laughs> oh, that's oh, a good one. I've <laughs> seen the popcorn before. That's <laughs> pretty good. 15 year old back in the shoes. It's like a puppy sure. dog and they're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Freeze frame. <laughs> Where's Jay Giles when you need him? De La Salle, star, trying to get that layup one more time, and that's a jump ball. That possession now will go to Red Wing, the wingers. 63-45, they beat New Prague in the opener, their arch rival, their nemesis, and then Richfield yesterday, or two days ago in the semis, 61-59. Now here they are in the title tilt with Tisha Buck. Newell, nice defensive play, almost got it back. Look at this. Okay, they're pre-planned here, aren't they? They've thought it out. Yeah. Like that. That's awesome. They duped the camera people. <laughs> Little volleyball match underneath and ball goes into the De La Salle bench right by John Patterson there. So we'll go back to Red Wing. Down by four. Down 10 nothing to start the game. And boy, that can be intimidating to a team like De La Salle, but they've marched back. Almost picked off again. Buck has it, guarded by Thomas. There's a whistle and a foul. And a foul on Claire Thomas. She's appealing it, but to no avail. <laughs> Coach Johnson's letting her know. 
T. Shavon plays a lot like Rebecca Dahlman, don't you think? I mean, it's going to be physical. Look at that long three. That's off the money. Rebound hauled down by Tyshana Johnson. I mean, they got they have similarities as far as their intensity and how good they are. Yep, they're they're very focused on the game, into the game. That's why Tyshana is a Miss Basketball candidate. She's an All-State player. She has committed to Iowa State. Well, I would bet she'll do real well. Yeah, she definitely will. She's a tremendous athlete. 15 to 9. De La Salle with the lead. Red Wing with the basketball. This is Macy Kelly. Pretty good player. Got five so far. She gets 15 a game there. Turnover. Johnson again putting on a bit of a show with the left-handed layup. That's what they do well. Is take advantage. Their defense creates offense. They take the ball from you and then they score. Kaishana averages 22 per game. This is Norvet. Kelly bumped a little bit and we heard the whistle. Some contact down there, and that's a foul on De La Salle. Tashana Johnson wants to go into broadcasting, Dave. So oh, really? Talk to her about your job. Well, I'd advise her on the rest of the job. I'm not sure that's the wisest career choice, but. She would be fantastic at it. Yeah, she's a she sharp would. young lady. She'll be good at whatever she does, I'm sure. Wide open look, Griffin. The three, that one's a little bit too hard. She found a range yesterday, which she hit six of them. We look back. Yes. I think she hit six yesterday. The state tournament record seven. Good look for Red Wing. Nice board, but a block again. You're battling for it. Nice job by Natalie to stick with that baby. Johnson, bullet move to the basket, but to no avail. And here comes Red Wing. That's Kelly. Almost followed on this shot. And there's another possession arrow. This time it'll be in favor of the Islanders. 27 and 4 out of the Tri Metro. I mentioned some of the schools there. Uh, Providence Academy. We saw them last night. St. Anthony Village. St. Croix Lutherans in that conference. Minnehaha Academy's in there. Concordia Academy, Roseville. Blake, Visitation. St. Agnes Breck is in that. St. Paul Academy, Summit. Brooklyn Center, Mounds Park Academy. You hardly have time for other games. <laughs> I guess so. De La Salle with the basketball. The noise level has been reduced from the last game. Johnson. And the only reason for that is that was a one-point state championship victory today for NRHEG over Bram. It might be one of the best games I've ever seen. Yeah, it was tremendous. For excitement. Just tense the whole way. The second half was so much fun to watch. Red Wing now. Norvette double team, and that's a possession arrow in favor of Red Wing. 19 and I were back up to 10 points. The wingers were just there a second ago. Substitution for Red Wing McKenzie Coda. McKenzie Coda comes in. For Red Wing. And taking a break will be Kara Norvette. Mulkin. Tosses it back out on top to Bubba Malkin. Oh, nice pass. Good run to the basket. The shot is by Mackenzie Malkin. That's her first of the night. Yeah, nice job by the Red Red Wing wingers. Just being patient offensively and looking for their best shot. Alina Starr. Started by Buck out there on top. Red Wing can keep this pace of the game right now that they have. That really does favor them. Natalie Yule wanted that ball. Shot is off, but the rebound, Tyshana, won't go. One more time, that's going to count. And she'll draw the foul, and she has the last 11 points for Dee LaSalle. And she was on the bench for a while. This is where you have to put a body on someone and block her out. You can't let jo allow Johnson just to float around and be right there by the basket. Buckle hauled down the board. Her team down by 10. She can light it up if she gets hot, too. Guarded by Tony. Throws it away. Turnover. Timeout on the court. First half, 6-18 to go in the state title game at Target Center, downtown Minneapolis. 
Hey, turn on the fans. Log on now to prep45.com to order this or any of your favorite games. Make the memories of your favorite athlete last a lifetime with your own DVD copy of the Minnesota State High School Tournaments presented by 45 TV and Grand Stadium. In the third place games earlier today, Richfield beat Monticello in the 3A 64 to 39. And in the 4A, Eastview beat Osseo 58 to 43. The LaSalle Spirit Squad. I just don't know what you do, what kind of emotions you do if you're a hot dog. There's really not much you can do, you just kind of stand there, don't you? I guess so. De La Salle, six minutes to go in this first half. In control right now, 21-11. That three-pointer by Griffin won't go. Tony with the rebound. Griffin breaks to the basket. And is there for the two-pointer. And she has five in the game. Yeah, let's see if Red Wing can get something going here on the offensive end. They, they've had a couple of nice half-court possessions where they worked the ball around and found their open shot. Referees will conference on that. DLSL's happy about that. Oh, what a coach that's smiling. Well, Faith Johnson was just smiling for a second. We never see no, that during sure the game. <laughs> Ron Alton, Matt Dornfeld, Deb Weinriss, our officials here tonight, our crew, Patience Griffin. She will throw that baby up. Doesn't even think twice about it. Yeah, last year she had six of those three-pointers quick passing by the wingers buck to the basket no good but she will draw a foul and that foul will be on De La Salle's Patience Griffin the senior and that's what Red Wing needs to do right now is just figure out a way to get buck more involved in this offense she's so good and she needs to get touches each time down even if she's attacking or trying to get her big three-point shot but you know, she got 32 points in the quarterfinal game and averages 24 on the season. She needs a big night here. Going to Wisconsin Green Bay next year. And by the way, when she's at the line, 80 percent. Yeah, she's good at that. And Red Wing needs to make sure that she gets her touches in this game. Gap at 10 points. Here comes Alina Starr. Came out and sparked her team to that early lead. Tony. Star. She can hit the three. She can penetrate. Tyshana is red hot so far tonight. And now she's going to pick up a foul after the miss. Get your local news, weather, and sports every night on 45 TV. Local news at 9 o'clock right here on 45 TV. And for the latest in high school sports, visit prep45.com. Tisha Buck will bring it up for the wingers, guarded by Taylor Tony. That's Kelly. Schaefer back into Kelly. Macy Kelly is a good scorer. She gets 15 a game. She's had 21 total in this tournament so far. But look at Star. She saw something she liked and drew the foul. Yeah, Star is incredibly difficult to defend. She's so strong, and you have to commit right away if you're going to get in the way of her and try to slow her down. She just decides to split the defense and get herself to the line. One of three on the line for Alina Starr in her fifth tournament. 24-15. De La Salle with the lead. Winners with the ball. Kelly's had a nice start there. Loses control of the basketball and it's going out of bounds off Red Wing. The turnovers, a big, big problem for Red Wing. Enrollment at Red Wing, uh, 1875. At De La Salle, 544. This is grades 9 through 12. In the ball game, Amanda Klein now for Dela Cell. She was number 45 on her uniform tie-up. Getting her hands on the basketball, McKenna Schaefer. 
Schaefer's a senior. Alina Starr is also a senior. Alina going to Auburn next year. Good inbound pass. Shot won't go, though. Kelly. Buck. Good quick first step. Nice looking shot. Yeah. She got a smooth delivery. Oh, there's an open look for Amanda. Won't go. Great rebound by Johnson. Alina Starr inside, and that one's just going to go for a ride up behind her, but a foul is going to be called on her way in. So this is Macy Kelly quickly bring up two fouls for her. Alina Starr in the game, six points, two of four from the strike. Two of five now. Alina at 13 games, or 13 points rather, in that first game against Chisago Lakes. And then against Monticello, she had 17. She's going to find herself here at the free throw line quite a bit in this game. 25-17, De La Salle with the lead. And let's have Tisha Buck take you to break from Red Wing. In last year's 3A final, De La Salle defended their title against the Richfield Spartans, and the Islanders got 24 points from Alina Starr and teammate Tyshana Johnson added 16 as De La Salle opened up an 11-point halftime lead to win by a final of 65 to 45. Yep, it feels like we've been watching this De La Salle team at the state tournament and championship games for quite some time. Yeah, I feel like uh, you know you and I have a yearly clinic with uh, <laughs> Lena Starr and uh, and Tyshana Johnson. Oh, some good dancing in here. Points off turnovers right now. De La Salle with 12, Red Wing with four. There's Buck long distance that won't go, and it might go off the hands of. Mackenzie Malkin got her hands on it briefly and then it lost it out of bounds. 3.22 to go. De La Salle by eight. Star will bring it up. Very deliberate this time. But keep in mind, she could turn on the Jets in just a second and take it right down the middle of that lane. Klein. Three points for Amanda. The junior. Yeah, that's a big shot for Amanda Klein. Yeah, that's an 11 point spread right there. Norvette back in. That's Kelly. That's a good move down now. Yeah, and good for Malkin to hang in there. And uh, she had defense coming at her and kept her composure. Used the glass, put it up there. Yep, I like the way that the 5'9 sophomore plays. She's got a good basketball sense, knows how to read her defense. There goes Alina Starr right down the middle. Buck picks it off. So one on two. Cross court, Norvette. A good look for three for the wingers. And it is absolutely drained by McKenna Schaefer. Yeah, Red Wing really starting to get into this, getting some good looks at the basket, sharing the ball well. That shot up by Tony won't go. She follows it. So that's what I like about De La Salle. Take a shot, they follow. You got a two-on-one break here. Kelly taken out of her hands by Starr. Nice defensive play by Alina. Ball goes right back to the wingers. Tisha Buck does a great job at the full court pass. Not a lot of players can do that. Patience Griffin back in. Taylor Tony is out. Kara Norvette inbounding the ball, trying to right now. There's a pass out to McKenzie, or to uh, McKenna Schaefer, rather. And Buck's long distance three won't go. Tyshana Johnson taking it all the way down. Dishes a good look for patience. Buck on the board and she's fouled from behind. Alina Starr gets the foul. Yeah, that's a good hustle by Tisha Buck. You know, one thing Red Wing needs to do, they really need to block out. You, it's not good enough with this deal of self team just to have the positioning because they're so athletic. They can still jump up above you and get the rebound. So you got to put a body on someone and push them back a little bit so they can start. Pulling down the boards. Buck is a senior. 32 points in his first game in this tournament. And she had 18 the next night. Actually fouled out after that 18 too. So. Yeah, Coach Malkin said we need her in the game, the entire game. Good delivery on what's a really difficult shot. 
Pitch. He can hit some real big shots, and the Red Wing fans like it. Back to within five. In the 23. Griffin. That's Klein. That's Thomas. Rebound Buck. Boyce just took it away from Tyshawn at that time. Schaefer to Buck. Cross court. Kelly. Good series of passes for Red Wing. And now an opportunity to three point play. And that got the crowd into it. That was just good basketball by the Red Wing wingers. Sure are working that baseline, Leah. Yeah, they're doing a great job of finding the opening right there. Red Wing gets that they are right in this game, and the bench is cheering them on. Well, they've cut the gap to three after trailing 10 0 to start the game. 28 25. Sal ranked number three in the final poll. Boy, 3A had some solid teams in it this year, didn't it? That's been a really nice division. Yeah, it has been. Well, Dave, we always talk about the importance of offensive rebounding or rebounding in general. Right now, De La Salle has 12 offensive rebounds, and Red Wing has three. Second chance points, De La Salle 10, Red Wing 2. They can work on those two categories right there. We already have a good game right now. That could make a huge difference. One more game after this, too, tonight in the 4A title game. Hopkins and Bloomington Kennedy. Well, that's Tyshana Johnson, and she is one of the star players on this De La Salle team. She has been fantastic in this first half, getting steals, getting big shots. She's super athletic and smart around the basket. She finishes well. Just an all-around good athlete. 11 points, seven boards for Tyshana Johnson. Miss Basketball candidate. One shot. We find that out tomorrow, maybe? I know it's soon, and I think it's going to be tough to decide who's going to get that award this year. Assuming maybe Nia Coffey might be a front leader, but boy, when you have Tyshana Johnson and... Gallman. Rebecca Gallman. And don't forget MC McGrory from Edina. 9 0 run right now for the wingers to put it to within two. There's a long three on the way. Look at the defense, the boxing out done by McKenna Schaefer. That's huge. And that's exactly what they need to do. Ball knocked out of bounds. Pretty impressive defensive play by the Islanders there. Macy Kelly looks like she might be going for a layup. Those are some quick hands that stop that play. Looking for the tying shot. And there's a foul. And going to the free throw line, I believe it will be Schaefer to shoot two. The foul will be on Amanda Klein. Coach is using some substitutions there. A one point game here. McKenna Schaefer from the line this year, a 68% free throw shooter through the season. 100% tonight. And we've seen some good free throw shooting in this game, and that's appreciated. It's a big contingent from the city of Red Wing. Way up to the top here. They've got a nice crowd. Almost like looking down from Barn Hill in downtown Red Wing. 19 seconds. Star. That's Johnson. Ewell on the board. It's her first points of the night. Out of bounds off Red Wing. Again, De La Salle getting second chance points. Seeing if they can get two more points before they get to halftime. Red Wing with a ton of momentum right now, but trying to get that last shot off. Johnson guarded by Buck. That's a great matchup. Alina Starr from way downtown, and that's going to fall short. Red Wing ends the half on an 11-2 run here at the Target Center in Minneapolis. 
Make for a pretty good game. 30 to 28. De La Salle with a halftime lead in this basketball game. We got much more to come on our halftime show. Plus, we got Tori down there with the coaches. I think Tori's going to grab Faith Johnson Patterson here before she gets into the locker room. Let's go down to Tori right now. Well, a good start, Coach, uh, for your squad, but Red Wing had some nice pushback there. Uh, what were your initial thoughts on the half? Basically, when we, we gave them the initial start, I mean, we gave them the basketball. We just All we needed to do was just take some time off the clock and take our time on offense. We forced up some stuff. You know, we wasn't looking to attack. I'm not sure why, but we'll get that figured out at halftime. Well, you, what were your message then be to the team in the locker room before you come out here in the second half? Well, number one, we got to play smart. We definitely got to do a better job on defense. We'll be okay. I mean, I have confidence and faith. I mean, that was one of the worst halves we had, I think, all, all tournaments. So we got to make some adjustments. I got to get their heads back ready for the second half. We'll be all right. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Like the second half. All right, Faith Johnson Patterson there. Hey, she's been here before. She's been down this road. She's looking for a seventh title. Right now, she has a 30 28 lead in Red Wing. Halftime is brought to you by TRIA Orthopedic Center, bringing innovation to patient care for extraordinary results. It looked like De La Salle might run away with this game, but Red Wing went on a nice run at the end of the first half. They only trail by two now. De La Salle leading 30 to 28 at halftime here of our Class 3A state championship game. Chris Long back with you here on 45 TV. Courtside joined by Lisa Lissamore. She's the associate director for the Minnesota State High School League and runs this girls basketball tournament. Now, you've had a tough job. Next year, the new uh, National Collegiate Hockey Conference tournament will be in Target Center. For the first time in 10 years, this tournament may not be in here what's the plan well this point the next year believe it or not and three years after we will flip-flop the tournaments we will the boys will play first and the girls will play second and the girls the University of Minnesota will become the primary site for the girls basketball tournament in addition to that the girls will play a Tuesday through Saturday schedule uh, which is different and yep. 10 of those quarterfinal games will be played here at Target Center and then all games after that will be played on the University of Minnesota's facility. So the big bullet points, the girls are going to play after the boys and the girls are going to move on to campus and they're going to start on Tuesday. What's been the initial feedback from coaches and teams when they've heard kind of what they're going to have to deal with next year? Well, when we enlisted a group of folks to help us with uh, making the decisions on the format and the structure of the tournament, we had members from both the Girls and Boys Coaches Association and and school administrators that aided us in developing the, the format and the structure that we've talked about. So looking way down the road in 2017 and 2018, what's the schedule there? Well, then the tournament will revert to the format of girls first and boys second okay. playing at the same sites that we talked about. So they'll still be at on, cam Arena. on campus over at the U. Yes, and the absolutely. Boys and boys will be played here at Target Center in Williams. I don't know how you keep it straight. It's been a tough situation. There's only so many venues you can play in. But the high school league's done a pretty good job of looking down the road and coming up with a pretty good plan for this tournament. You're absolutely right, Chris. It's been tough. It's been months and months of planning to come up with a, a, with a system that will allow us to continue to bring eight teams in from the four classes and to play them in venues here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about that game earlier that, that we saw, the Bram New Richland HEG game. You've seen a lot of games here at the state tournament. I don't want to ask you to rank them, but just what was your impression of what we saw in that game? Certainly would be ranked one of my top ten, no doubt about that. Some There's been some outstanding performances here today. Uh, it's just been a, a magnificent tournament, to be quite frank with you. Lisa Lissamore, Associate Director for the State High School League and in charge of this terrific girls basketball tournament. It's always fun talking with you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Lisa. We'll be back with the second half of the Class 3A Championship game. Boy, here's the drama from this afternoon as New Richland HEG won a classic, taking home the double-A title. With you here at Target Center, the Class 3A State Girls Basketball Championship game. De La Salle leading Red Wing 30 to 28. Rejoining me here on our courtside studio, Jenny Johnson and Marissa Layton. Jenny, your impressions of the first half? Well, I'm surprised a little bit that it's as close as it is, being as heavily favored as De La Salle was. But credit Red Wing's balance. They have a lot of kids who are scoring. Marissa, your thoughts? 
You know, I think this pace is a little bit slow for De La Salle. I think Coach Faith Johnson Patterson would like to see them pick up the tempo, get up and down the court a little bit more. The star players providing most of the offense for both sides, as expected. Touch on Johnson paving the way for De La Salle to have this two point lead at halftime. I'll show you some of the highlights here from the first half, and it's not just her usually, but in this first half, 11 points for Tyshawna Johnson. She has led the way. You know, Tyshawna Johnson is a senior. This is her fifth state tournament appearance. I think I'd like to see a little bit more out of Alina Starr and actually the entire De La Salle team in the second half. Jenny, the 11-2 run lead is sparked by Tisha Buck from Red Wing to get him back in the game. Well, she has such a nice shot from the outside and has a sweet pull-up jumper. But like I said before, they have a bunch of kids looking to score. Scored nine straight points, and it was like I said, excuse me, 10 straight points, and it was an 11 2 run to close the first half. Today's halftime stats are brought to you by Dynamo. Refuel off the court with Dynamo chocolate milk, the mobile milk that goes where you go. Marissa, your thoughts? One thing that you don't see on this stat sheet is that De La Salle actually has more offensive rebounds than defensive rebounds. So I think Red Wing needs to do a better job of keeping them off the boards in the second half. Wow, Jenny, anything to add? Well, I think despite the, stati the statistical difference in it, Red Wing is still down too. When you're a De La Salle team and you're this heavily favored, the one thing you don't want to do, Marissa, is let a team hang around. Red Wings capitalize on these opportunities, and as long as Tisha Buck can stay out of foul trouble, they've got a shot. If I know this De La Salle team as well as I think I do, they are going to come out fast and furious in the first two minutes of this second half. Jenny, what does Red Wing need to do to try and stay in this thing and maybe pull this out at the end? I think two things. One, like Marissa said, they need to get on the defensive boards and block De La Salle out. Two, be ready for their press. Setting up for a pretty good finish here in the Class 3A Championship. Just a two-point game at halftime. De La Salle leading Red Wing 30-28. to Now let's go over to the TRIA Orthopedic Center. Let's talk a little about abdominal injuries. Coming back out as the band plays and the crowd cheers for the second half of the Class 3A Championship game. De La Salle leading Red Wing 30-28. to De La Salle trying for a three-peat here in Class 3A. Red Wing trying for their first ever state title in their fifth trip to the state tournament. They've been here three years in a row. Unable to win a title, but they are shooting for it this year. Let's go down to Tory Holt with Red Wing coach Dave Logan. Thank you, Chris Long. And coach, uh, we talked about it. Not a whole lot of people right before the game would have given you a chance, but you're right here in the game. What'd you talk to the kids about in the locker room? Rebounding. Uh, that was the first thing. Uh, we know we're getting killed on the boards, and we talked about it before the game, and we're going to have to do a better job. And we know that because I think we've proven to ourselves anyway, and maybe nobody else believes, but we do. Um, and we can play with them, you know, and our kids just walk back. And, and the effort, our intensity, everything is there. If we don't give them all those second chance points, it's a, it's a you know, we might even be ahead here. And, uh, you know, this is just like another conference game for us. This is a, this is a battle that we're used to. So uh, we played in a lot of close games. We feel comfortable there. Now we got to prevent the run. Coach, we appreciate your time. Good luck in the second half. Appreciate it. All right, there's head coach Dave Malkin of Red Wing and Dave Lee. Hey, they're just uh, one half and a couple of points away from a state championship and maybe a monumental upset if they get it done. Well, that Dave Malkin's a coach, man. He knows what he's doing. Dave went to Bemidji State. He's got this game figured out two years, 41 and 18. Jesse Nelson over there on the sidelines helping him. I want to give a shout out to him. John Bombeck, another assistant over there. Johnny's brother, Jay, great, great, outstanding, legendary baseball player out of Red Wing. So they've got a lot of athletic knowledge over on that sideline. And you can see it when they tighten this game up, Leah, to two points. Yeah, I mean, this is a great game. And I think um, Coach Malkin was underestimating all the people who believe that they can do it. They've had a great season. They're in the championship game. Um, I think, basically, if they get on the boards and they cut the turnovers, it's going to be a great game now my guess is is that you know faith went into the locker faith johnson patterson went into her locker room and read her kids the riot act so i think they're going to come out and they're going to start pushing the tempo and attacking the basket so they're going to have to handle the pressure if they can do that cut the turnovers and get the boards we got a great game so you think faith uh, had some uh <laughs> <laughs> Authoritative messages in that locker room, huh? I don't think she was happy with her crew in the first half. We'll see how they respond here in the second. Well, a lot of it, too, is the way Red Wing plays defense. Yeah, absolutely. And now here comes uh, Alina Starr. She started the game out really hot, and she's going to start the second half out the same way. Yeah, and you're right about that, David. And such a great sign for, for De La Salle when, when Starr comes out playing well quickly. A run on the 
baseline. This is uh, what really got him back in the game. They saw Mackenzie Malkin down there, and they also use Macy Kelly, and they'll run the baseline. They, they were able to draw falls when, there ain't, when they weren't able to get the ball in the hoop. Well, Malkin, although just a sophomore, plays very smart basketball, and she knows that if she can keep attacking, she's going to get the calls. That's eight points for her in the game. Mackenzie is an, a 70 percent free throw shooter. She's had 18 points total in the tournament. Alina Starr now a two point game again. Claire Thomas. Tyshana Johnson. Against Buck. What a great matchup of two. Heavily talented high school seniors. Star quick cross dribble. Tony that's Thomas and that's Natalie Yule down in the corner coming out of that pivot now right back in there as you can see kind of moving around the perimeter star see something she likes it's Johnson under the basket that's what makes star so good is she's so crafty and she just slips right behind her defenders no one knows where she is great pass by her teammate Taylor Tony with a nice uh, kick out there on that defensive pressure. Ball will be inbounded by Kara Norvet, the junior, throwing it into Macy Kelly. Macy's a senior, 5'8, right back to Norvet. And they'll set up the offense against the man to man defense and a very tight man to man, too. Give and go in the middle. And that's a break for Edwin, I think, because you could see that Macy Kelly couldn't quite get to the ball, so she batted out, and Tyshana Johnson top touched it. There's, there's Dave, Malkin, head coach. Yeah, right David won't sit down much in the game, I can guarantee you that. Ball rolls off the leg and over to the uh, De La Salle Islanders. Here they come, Alina all the way down. That one won't drop, though. Blair Thomas, she's tied up, or is it a foul? It is a foul against the wingers. Red Wing High School up on Eagle Ridge Drive in the beautiful city of Red Wing. It's so pretty out there. Second foul on McKenna Schaefer. About an hour away from the target center here. So Johnson won't go. Buck pretty sure handed that lead pass caught up to by Kelly. In the bound. Nice pass lane. Looked like it was going to drop. It did not. They had everything set up. Yep, it's a good look. It's, you want to do it again. You just got to finish on it. Star, Tony. They're going to give her that three if Taylor wants it. She won't, we won't see her shoot that a lot. She'll run the baseline, get over to the other side where she's open for the short range jumper and just missed it. Rebound haul down by the wingers. Charging. Nice job by Claire Thomas giving up her body. 34 30. Star with a basketball playing for the state championship here. De La Salle beating Chisago Lakes and Monticello. Red Wing beating their conference forward, New Prague and Richfield. Richfield winning third place here this afternoon, by the way, in their game against Monticello, 64 to 39. Behind the basket, and it ends up. With good defense pressuring Tyshana, she went in. Look at that double team. It is just relentless when they tie you up and they'll get the ball back. Just watching Tyshana Johnson chase someone down is so funny because it's like, it's kind of scary. She's just there. She's coming, gets closer, and then she tries to get the turnover. The minute that they stop that dribble once they cross the half lane, they have that trap, and boy, that is so effective yeah, for them. They're so good at it. Just looking for something to happen down the middle. Alina kicking it out for the open shot on the side. Not going to go. There's a lot of contact down low. Who are they going to put the foul on? Norvette. They had a pretty good battle going down underneath there. Timeout. De La Salle by four. 14.50 left in this one. 
The second half is brought to you by Education Minnesota, the union of 70,000 teachers, school staff, and higher education faculty who work hard to give our students the tools they need to succeed at every level. Today's fan cam brought to you by 45 TV. Some of the fans, here they come. Standing out, oh, there's the fruit. They've got something for us every time, don't they? <laughs> a, a little slow mo this time. Must be the theater group who's uh, in the crowd today. It's got to be. Huh? They got a pretty good coach who's ever running that system over there. Might put a, have to put them on the All State halftime team. <laughs> De La Salle. Natalie Yule out to Alina Starr. A nice pass to Johnson and too hard. Rebound. As soon as Tyshana touched it, she missed it, but she stays in there and just continues to see if she can get up. Yeah. Good basket, and she does. She is so tough. Too hard. Johnson Ooh. taken right out of her hands by Kelly, and the layup is good. Wow, Macy Kelly, the senior. She pulled a Tyshana. Yes, she did. On Tyshana. <laughs> you never see that happen to Tyshana. Look at this. She, this is a big rebound. Tyshana brings it down. And Kelly takes it right out of her hands to lay it in. That is exactly what the, she does. It, uh, Kelly just, uh, we mentioned earlier, she's really a good basketball player. And she's made it a four point difference now. And here comes Alina Starr. Alina had a great start to the game. Kind of got her team rocking to a 10-0 lead right away. Again, they'll try to keep her from being able to penetrate on the top of the key skills because once she gets by, she's like a bullet in there. She just flies to the hoop. Yeah, and you either have to commit or get out. Thomas, Star, Ewell, Tony. Again, if you know, this defense is going to put De La Salle in this half-court, slow-paced game. Red Wing has to be very happy with that. Yeah, the Red Wing defense is really well prepared here. And there's another pickoff. This is Kelly. Another theft. She's going to take it all the way herself against Ewell. And now a tie-up afterwards. And that possession arrow goes to Red Wing. Patience. Griffin will come in. Going out of the ball game. Taylor Tony, the sophomore. Tisha Buck. Gets it right back. Turn around. Quick turn around shot is not going to go. Rebound held on by Natalie Yule off to Lena Starr. Starr sees an opening. Yule with the foul and the foul. Natalie Ewell, six foot one senior. Star can't finish. She comes in to get her rebound. First free throw for Dee LaSalle in the second half, trying to make it a seven point lead here after leading by two at halftime, and they do. Three point play for Natalie, 39 32. There's that double team the minute you stop with the ball and get it. Do they get a timeout? Heads up. They can trap you so quickly. Yeah, that is amazing how quickly they get to you, and that's why you got to keep the ball moving. Another game coming up uh, in the 4A when this one's over. Bloomington Kennedy, the Eagles, 23 this year, taking on the Hopkins Royals, 31. They played early on in the season. Hopkins beat them by four. Yeah, I think this is going to be a great matchup. You know that Hopkins has all the great players and Mia Coffey, and they're strong and they know how to win. But this Bloomington Kennedy team is filled with lots of talented players. And Kanisha Bell, tremendous guard, some nice post play. So it should be a great tilt. Grandma Star. <laughs> Love it. Proud Grandma should be. Really handled that break so well, only to miss the shots and end up getting fouled on it. Natalie Yule will pick up the fouls. There'll be two shots coming up for 
the wingers. Macy Kelly is doing a good job of getting in the mix of this game, getting herself to the free throw line. Nine points tonight. Trying to break into that double digit territory. Those are the first two misses, her last two free throws of the of the evening. They were seven in a row up to that point. So they're and they are a good free throw shooting team as you look at their percentages. She's a 70 percent shooter. 39 33 Alina Starr looks at that defense. What's it going to be this time. Looks like it's going to be a man to man. Leah they're switching it up. Yeah, You're right. And I would think that De La Salle would not mind that unless they have it. Maybe it's more of a matchup. Starr. Good feed to Johnson and now here's a whistle and what's this. I think that's a charge isn't it? underneath the bucket. Nice job by Tisha Buck. Buck's been pretty quiet. He hasn't scored in the second half. Haven't seen a whole lot of her. But she stood there when Alina Starr came in and delivered the pass. And that's where the foul occurred. You just saw it right there. Now watch this trap of the stop your dribble here. This is Norvet. Started by Griffin. Good job of being patient. You just can't panic. When De La Salle puts their defense on, you can't panic. And Slow it down a little bit. Kelly shovels it to the side. The baseline jumper not going to go. Kelly again. Boy, I like that game. I agree with you. She is ready to go in this championship game, and she is making a difference. 39 35. De La Salle with the lead. Star with the basketball. Going to get that pick from Yule. Schaefer runs through it. This is Tyshana. Picked off. Kelly momentarily taken back by Yule. Griffin, that's her shot. There she goes. Got number two. Yep. And a steal. Star right to the basket. Won't go. Rebound. Buck. <laughs> Kelly. Good luck by Buck. Wow. Here comes Viva Sal right back. The wingers, that's going to be foul and kind of an incidental fall on Claire Thomas. Yeah. She didn't mean to do that, but it was just a matter of momentum. And that'll be a fall on the Islanders. 42 35. It's a pretty good game we got going here. It certainly is. Well, that's not, that's yeah. not good when those two have three. That's not good at all. I mean, unless you're Red Wing, then it's good. <laughs> this is true. Kelly, spin. Wow, do the foul. Uh-oh, Alina just picked that one up. I think that'll be her fourth. Macy Kelly came to play. It's having a conversation with her head coach, Faith Johnson-Patterson. Five point difference. Kelly at the stripe. One of three tonight. Two of four tonight. 42 38. Another good game. We've had nothing but great games today. And it looks like we're headed for another good championship game. Tons of time left in this one for both squads. Star, though, are you surprised that she's still in with four fouls right now? Yes. Won't go. Tip back, there's Bach, lead pass. Schaefer, star, what a theft. It's a great look by Tisha Buck. Her teammate needs to go after the ball, Schaefer, and grab it. Johnson, power move to the basket, still won't go. Griffin, double dribble. Turnover, De La Salle, 42-38. Championship, Saturday night, Target Center. Tonight's game summary brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today for amazing specials during Toyota's number one for everyone sales event. Well, the nice surprise for Red Wing is the way that Macy Kelly's playing with 15 points. And Buck's doing her thing as well. Johnson and Starr are doing well for De La Salle, but they're in serious foul trouble. Starr has four, Johnson three. There's 10 minutes left in this second half of this championship game. Full court pressure applied. Norvet, sure Dave Malkin tell him, watch the trap when you stop the dribble. Thomas all over. Norvet like a cheap suit. 
Kelly. Corner. Good look for Schaefer. Star with a rebound. Alina. Ewell. Patience. Oh, man. You better get close to her as soon as she touches the ball. Yesterday she had six three pointers. He's got two in this game. Alina Starr, 941, her team up by four. Tyshana Johnson again, Tyshana with three falls in this game. Wainers change their defense again. Very deliberate, deliberate offense for De La Salle. Almost as if we're watching Providence Academy. Yeah, it is similar right now, mm -hmm. isn't it? Johnson so quick for that crosshand dribble. A nice looking jumper will not fall though. And on the rebound, the ball's out of bounds. It will be De La Salle's basketball. Coach Faith Johnson Patterson watching a pretty good matchup out here for the Islanders against the Red Wing Wingers. Scramble for the ball. That's an over and back. Inbound pass. Kara Norvette will throw it in for Red Wing. Down by four. 9.06 to go. We're in the second half. State title is on the line for the winner. Tisha Buck has not scored in the second half. She had 10 in the first. She had 32 points in the first game of this tournament. She's guarded by Starr. That'll be interesting if they try to get a one on one matchup with her. Now she's going to the right side. Long three. It's too hard. Rebound. De La Salle. Star going to push it up. She's got a two on two break. Good decision making. Didn't have players set in the right spot, so she pulls it out. Griffin's shot will be short. Johnson knew it and followed it. That, there she is again. Tyshana Johnson's everywhere. The other way, long distance. That one is up and in from Malkin. Kenzie Malkin working hard in this game, getting big points. Yule from the free throw line, in and out. Here comes Buck now. She'll push it. Another pass. Malkin falls down, and that's a travel. 44-40, 8 4 to go. Coach Dave Malkin. Ouch, it looked like her head hit the floor. Yeah, that's scary. There's not much give on this floor, is there? Star off the pick, all the way in, draws a foul, go to the free throw line. I think the shoot two is in the act of shooting. Alina Star, 13 points in that opener against Chisago Lake, 17 against Monticello. And now with nine in the game, but also playing with four fouls. Yeah, and I, you know, I'd like to see Star attack the basket every time that she has the ball. Um, She's good at it. But she does have four fouls. There's Tyshana Johnson again. She's everywhere. She does such a good job of slipping around the defenders. That's a seven-point lead now by the Islanders. Buck. High pass. Oh, I know. Time out. Coach Malka wants to talk things over with his crew right now. Get him settled down. 7.31 to go in this game. And I think it's a better game than some people thought it might be. But you and I saw Red Wing beat Ridgefield. I don't think we needed any convincing, did we? I mean, that Ridgefield team is outstanding, and Red Wing played right with them. And those are two good programs we're watching, so nothing stuns us here. But I think, it, you know, talk around here was that De La Salle would be a... Uh, it might be an easier game, but when you watch these kids play a defense from Red Wing, I mean, it's a, it's a fun battle between these two coaches and these two teams. And the bottom line is, if you can make it this far, your team is very good, and this Red Wing team is so fundamentally sound. They have a star player. You know, they have what it takes, so 
That's why they're here. But they've only had two of their players score in the second half. And surprisingly, Tisha Buck is not one of them. Yeah, and that is the one thing I said it at the first half, too. Tisha Buck needs to touch that ball more and be involved in the offense. Tyshana Johnson brings it up. There's Alina Starr. Schaefer's on her. Tony. Starr just trying to do a few things on the top. And Johnson for three. She's been hot. Buck with a good rebound. She can push it up. She's six feet. She's lost the basketball. And who else? Tyshana Johnson. Yeah, she's really doing a tremendous job in this game. There's that trap. That's a foul. And how many is that? That's on Tyshana. She's got four. All right. So that's a big problem for DeLaSalle. Tyshana has been so important in this game. So she looks like she's going to keep her in. Well, she's got 10 of the team's points in the second half. Macy Kelly, who plays a very similar game to Tyshana, and they, these two actually have been keeping. They're, they got a little battle going here between the two of them, playing really strong, and a lot of it is second chance points. Yeah, that's exactly right. Got them both. Time out on the court. It's a seven-point difference here in the state title game, and here's a Miz basketball candidate taking you to break on 45 TV. Let's look at the, this combo since eighth grade, Leah. It's amazing what they've done over the years in the tournament. They are tournament vets, that's for sure. The numbers getting larger as they grow in age, starting at eighth grade in 2009. Pretty impressive. They won't see much of each other next year. One going to Auburn, one going to Iowa State. And both of them right now we're going four fouls as we close in on the uh, final minutes of this basketball game seven point lead for De La Salle. It's been a pretty good game all the way through De La Salle had a 10 nothing lead right away and then uh, Red Wing came back and made it a two point game at halftime. Star off the screen still dribbling. Thomas back to star. Ooh. Ball knocked away inside, and Tony has it, and there's a foul. That's a two-shot free throw coming up for Taylor Tony. Averages four and a half a game. She's a sophomore, six-footer. No points in the game yet. And 17 points in the quarterfinals. It's huge in that game. Averages just about five on the season. And she got that shot up and in. So that makes it three for four in the second half. Eight for 12 in the game. Four. De La Salle from the line. More points to put up by nine. That one is uh, going to hang on the rim and fall off. Here's Tisha Buck now. Tisha guarded tightly by Claire Thomas. Lead pass down to Schaefer. Lorette right back to Buck. She's going to dish it right back. Everybody touch it. Buck's got a three lined up. Won't go. Rebound. See, I would like to see Buck be a little bit more selfish, you know, in the paint and take, take some strong moves in there. She can drive to the basket. Haley Keel went down hard, and now Dave Malkin not happy with that call at all. Right there, he said he's right by the sideline. And Expressed his disappointment with it, so Starr has the ball back down under six minutes now, and she can dribble her way out of a lot of trouble. There, a foul was called out on top on McKenna Schaefer. No shot as of yet. Oh, there's the bonus. DSL's in a situation 54 to 2 that they can just take their time offensively. They don't need to rush anything, you know. 10 points in the game for a star. 11. 
Faith Johnson Patterson alluded to it when she was going into the locker room at halftime. Why are we rushing? We don't need to be doing that. And you've really seen here in the second half them taking their time on offense. Ball bounces all the way back out to Star. Mule on the top. And now they'll roll it around again and just work the perimeter as much as they can. There's an inside look for Thomas. He wants to get it right back out. Down to five and a half minutes to play in this state championship game. De La Salle by nine. They're going to dribble it and spread the floor. So they're either going to have to get in those passing lanes or think about a foul. Johnson draws the foul again as she goes to the basket. Tyshana Johnson with 21 points in the game. Red Wing comes Schaefer, number 22. Report. You know, that's really exactly what Red Wing doesn't want to do is work all that time on defense and spend a minute on defense and then follow up the end and put the OSL on the free throw line. Number one. Number 15 back the so some substitutions as you can see by Red Wing trying to keep the kids fresh here in the final five minutes and that one's good. Well now suddenly it's an 11 point lead and it was real close here just a few seconds ago. It was the double team ball knocked out of bounds by Tony out of the hands of Bubba Malkin. Tisha Buck to Malkin. Kelly covered up. Thomas making sure she gets real close. Here's Tisha Buck dishing the pass off. This is where I think Tisha Buck should be getting the ball, get involved in the offense. Turnover on Red Wing. They end the half, the first half they ended on an 11 2 run. Right now down 53 42 and Alina Starr will be in no hurry to take it down court. She's worked a long time with four fouls. Up, walking it up court. They got four minutes 30 seconds left. They're going to take all the time they need. You can see Tyree Ross and John Patterson over there in the sideline helping out Faith Johnson Patterson in the coaching department. And Alina Starr back to the free throw line 53 42. At the line. 11 points tonight. Didn't even move the net, I don't think, on that one, Leah. Two state titles, all state player again this year. And she get another chance. She's been at the line quite a bit in this ball game. Got them both. That's her seventh made free throw. Biggest lead. And for De La Salle, and this is a 13 to 2 run. Much like the run we saw Red Wing have it right to half, De La Salle's come back now with that same kind of run. Yeah, it's been great basketball by De La Salle. They're doing it exactly how their coach has asked. De La Salle picking up that loose ball. The Islanders and De La Salle, for those who don't know, just, I mean, you could walk there from the target center. That's how close they are. Here in downtown, right over the bridge. We're trying to use some time. There's a foul out on top. Norvette will get it. Tyshana Johnson, 55 42. You know, when this game was uh, two points apart, Leah, and their two guards had four fouls, you're thinking, boy, this could change the dynamics in a hurry. They managed to stay out of foul trouble. Exactly. And. You know, their head coach, Faith Johnson Patterson, didn't seem the least bit worried about it because she didn't pull either of them out of the game. And that's why she's the head coach. She knows what she's doing. Timeout. Now a big 15 point lead. 3.49 to go in this game. De La Salle with the lead. Quite a bunch here tonight. For your latest highlights, stats, and scores from today's games, go to prep45.com and click brackets. That's an awful lot of work going into the design of those outfits. I know it. Those are the dealer salaries. 
Yeah, they're having a good old time over there. Red Wingers on the opposite side. They're cheering a, a, a against one another once in a while. They're having a pretty good time out here. Yeah. Good to see them supporting their squads. Norvette with the basketball now trying to cross against Claire Thomas. There's trap area if she stops quickly got rid of it smart thinking. Buck long three too hard. Rebound Bubba Malkin. Norvette. Kelly. Norvette. Buck look at the distance on that shot. Ooh. We'll see a lot of bounds. Yes. You know, you can hear in the background a chance of three feet. That's what would happen should De La Salle win it. Star dribbling around outside. Now getting the count. Now it stops. Now it starts. And a reach and foul on Macy Kelly. Is that going to be your fifth? Yeah, I think it is. She had a big game, too. And the Red Wing fans stand for her as she gives her coach a hug. And heads to the bench. She had 17. Yeah, she was fantastic in this game. Back in the game will be McKenna Schaefer. That's always emotional for the players, especially a senior. But it isn't because of lack of effort. She had a heck of a game. Alina Starr has been at that free throw line a lot tonight. This is her 14th free throw. She's made nine of them. Bubba Malkin, good move to the middle. The last Red Wing field goal was about six minutes ago. Well, that's difficult, and that's exactly when Deal Cell's defense and their offense all started coming together. Tisha Buck with her first field goal of the second half. <laughs> Here's the full court pressure. Alina Starr with a 2.41 to go, 14 point lead for the Islanders. Schaefer will pick her up. Gould comes out and gives her that screen as she does so often. Yep. As Yule touches it, she is fouled. So Natalie will go to the free throw line. Six foot one senior. Five points in the game. She's been here once before. And she got it. Natalie Yule has done a nice job contributing this game. 60 to 45 now, the Islanders. This was a two point game at halftime. It's only in the last, uh, well, six minutes, I guess, that Red Wings have been unable to get a field goal, and De La Salle's been taking advantage of it. Here's Buck now. Gets past the double team. Past the third player. She's got an open look for Schaefer down there, but now she's covered up, so they'll go down low. Bad pass. Picked up by the wingers. And another fall stops play. Tonight's play of the game is brought to you by Education Minnesota, the union of 70,000 teachers, school staff, and higher education faculty who work hard to give our students the tools they need to succeed at every level. Tyshana Johnson gets the steal here, just like she does so well, and then she goes in for the bucket. She has been so sneaky in this game. She just slips around. She's so athletic. And there she is, just out of the game. Iowa State bound for Tyshana. Yeah, I think that's going to be a great fit for her. 
Ooh, almost picked off, and then Tony managed to hang on to that ball. Cross court pass to Griffin. This is Claire Thomas, star, still in there, but she worked a long time with four falls, didn't she? I know, give her credit on that. And as she drives to the lane, another fall is called. And this will send her right back to the free throw line. This Tyshana getting the hair down. Yeah, she's just, it's just been so interesting watching Tyshana and Alina play all these years and see the confidence grow. And in this game, you felt like they were never nervous, made very few mistakes. McKenna Schaefer's night is done. Hugs for her teammates. McKenna, they'll be back as a sophomore. Meanwhile, Alina Starr continues that string of free throws. That's five consecutive for Alina. Well, McKenna's a senior. I don't know why I thought she was a sophomore. So she's wrapping up her career tonight in the state championship game. Back. 61-47. Star dribbling past all sorts of trouble out there. And trying to go for a steal was Bubba Malkin. Let's check out your player of the game tonight, brought to you by the University of Minnesota Crookston at umcrookston.edu. 25 points, 12 rebounds. Tyshana Johnson in her fifth state championship. Alina Stars hit six free throws in a row. Make it seven. Will she be done right here? Nope. Patience Griffin goes out. Here comes Tisha Buck. Guarded by Claire Thomas. Buck with that cross hand dribble. Fadeaway jumper. All down by De La Salle and the Islanders now with a little over a minute to go. Passing around. Yule back to Star being pursued. She'll dribble it around. They're going to have the layup for her. Buck with a rebound. She'll push her down court. Still won't drop for her. And there's a foul on Taylor Tony. Sixty-three forty-nine. Red Wing coming off that big two-point win over Richfield. De La Salle just motoring through the state tournament. This is their closest game so far. Well, that's free throw falls off the front of the rim. They beat Chisaga Lake 73-49. There goes Tisha Buck. Great hug for Coach Malkin. The senior has played in her last game in high school, but boy, has it been a tremendous career. Yeah, and it'll keep on next year for her at the Wisconsin Green Bay. Sixty-three fifty. So Lena Starr, who's become a regular, going to start charging her rent <laughs> if she's there much longer. She's at that free throw line. A lot of eight in a row for her now. Nor Karen Norvette will go out. 19 points in the game, make it 20. Here's Bubba Malkin. Haley Keel. That's Malkin almost over and back. Eddie Face in there. Shot won't go for the wingers. Star has it again. And she'll be fall with 31.5 seconds to go and walk back down to the other end and shoot some more free throws. Faith Johnson Patterson looking for state title number eight. 
She's 31 and a half seconds away from it. She hasn't stopped coaching. And we saw this in the last game where Star has stayed in the game to the very end, even when she's bringing in all the youngins. Letting her, letting her run the show with the youngins who will be taking over the program. Alina Starr has done everything that her coach has asked of her this evening. Oh, she, she had nine in a row up to that one. Mackenzie Cota goes out. And into the game is Lauren Brooks. That's her right there. Bubba Malkin right to the basket. Nice. Now she'll draw a foul. <laughs> it's an eighth grader. Now Lena finally gets out of the game. Big smile, big cheers from the fans. There it is, the two eighth graders that we have watched grow up. Give each other a big hug. At every state tournament. Five years in a row in a state tournament. Larry Thomas, she's another great player. She's a senior. She's part of this. She is. Three feet two. Really Keel goes to the bench. And Bubba's shot is off there. Little Sal with the basketball, Hazel Lee Sellers. Some of the future of Deal Cell basketball. And, and a shot. Picked off by Maddie Face of Red Wing and then going to go out of bounds with 2.4 left. So De La Salle will get it back here as they await a celebration. Inbound pass from Haley Keel. Taken by Sellers. And that's it. The trifecta. Three in a row. State champions. De La Salle's Islanders as they celebrate at center court. Johnson Patterson, eight state titles as a coach. A two point game at halftime. It was 30 to 28. And at one point, when it was two points apart, she and her teammate Tyshawn had four fouls. They never got to fit. And they stayed in the game. And there you see the state champions three times in a row. So that puts them in the history books of a lot of great teams. Not a lot, some. There's not many people in that prestigious category. And what a year for Red Wing. Holy smokes. End up in the state championship game. Let's go over to Dave Giles. Dave will take us through this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to begin our awards ceremony. At this time, we will present the 10-member Wells Fargo All Tournament team, chosen by members of the Minnesota Girls Basketball Coaches Association. These students have distinguished themselves by their athletic excellence, leadership, team commitment, and exceptional sportsmanship. 
Presenting the trophies for the Wells Fargo All-Tournament Team at center court is Darren Zielsdorf, Wells Fargo Business Banking Manager. And now, the 2013 Class 3A Girls Basketball All-Tournament Team. From Monticello, guard Grace Sawatsky. From Monticello, forward Alyssa Lentner. From Ridgefield, guard Jessica January. From Ridgefield, forward Kyla Adams. From Red Wing, guard Tisha Buck. From Red Wing, forward Macy Kelly. From Red Wing, guard McKenna Schaefer. From De La Salle. Guard, Elena Starr. From De La Salle, forward, Taishana Johnson. And from De La Salle, guard, Patience Griffin. Please join Wells Fargo in the Minnesota Athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 Class 3 Girls Basketball All-Tournament Team. In tournament action earlier today at Concordia University in St. Paul, the Class 3A third place game was won by Richfield with a 64 to 39 victory over Monticello. The Class 3A fourth place trophy was awarded to Monticello High School. Bronze medals and the Class 3A third place trophy were awarded to Richfield High School. Congratulations to our Class 3A third and fourth place teams for an outstanding state tournament. At this time, we'd like to present the second place trophy and medals. These awards will be presented by members of the Minnesota State High School League Board of Directors. They are Scott McCready of St. Charles, and Roz Peterson of Lakeville. They are assisted by tournament director, Lisa Lissamore. Silver medals on the Class 3A second place trophy will be awarded to Red Wing High School. The silver medals will now be presented to each team member. Please step forward to receive your medal as your name is announced. Number one, Michaela Mulkin. Number two, Lakia Hamilton. Number three, Mackenzie Coda. Number four, Haley Heal. Number five, Lauren Brooks. Number 10, Morgan Zebro. Number 11, Kara Norvet. Number 12, Tisha Buck. Number 13, Mackenzie Mulkin. Number 15, Adele DeSutter. Number 20, Maddie Bates. Number 21, Maddie Bodensteiner. Number 22, McKenna Schaefer. Number 23, Amber Garner. Number 25, Macy Kelly. Number 33, Rebecca Swenning. 
Number 40, Maddie Sanchu. Number 41, Veronica Kingston. Student manager, Jordan Demon. Student manager, Kelsey Hager. Assistant coach, Jesse Nelson. Assistant coach, John Bombach. Head coach, Dave Mulkin. And now will the captains of the Red Wing team please come forward to receive the Class 3A second place trophy. Congratulations to Red Wing High School, second place, Class 3A girls basketball for 2013. The 2013 Minnesota State High School Class 3A girls basketball champion is De La Salle High School. The gold medals will be presented to each team member. Please step forward to receive your medal as your name is announced. Number three, Alina Starr. Number four, Ellen Leahy. Number five, Akibiana Rembert. Number 10, Joy Jones. Number 13, Kiana Young. Number 14, Azalee Sellers. Number 15, Natalie Yule. Number 20, Claire Thomas. Number 21, Patience Griffin. Number 22, Taishana Johnson. Number 23, Cameron Spies. Number 24, Anna Schaff. Number 25, Taylor Tony. Number 32, Pat Podwill. Number 35, Anna Potwill. Number 45, Amanda Klein. Student manager, John Patterson, Jr. Student manager, Charnel Snedder. Assistant coach, John Patterson. <laughs> Assistant coach, Tyree Ross. <laughs> Head coach, Faith Johnson Patterson. Well, what a night for De La Salle, third time in a row, and I don't think it gets old, Leah. I don't think so either, and how impressive to be able to watch this group year after year uh, do their thing and 
and do it better than most. And a congratulations to Coach Mulkin and his crew. What a tremendous season that the Red Wing wingers had as well. Yeah, I like I like the way he coaches. Boy, he really had a, they had a great run except for the last oh what uh, four or five minutes in the game when uh, De La Salle went on that run and ended up getting another victory. But De La Salle really coasted through the, this uh, tournament. They really had a great offense, great defense. Red Wing had a wonderful tournament, especially that Richfield game. And it takes a ton out of you, too, when you beat a really good team like that. And they did by two, and they deserved it. And we can see the three-peat for the kids and for the head coach, Faith Johnson Patterson. She has eight as she got her trophy. You can see in the background one of the folks, one of the assistants over on the bench who held her hands up holding number eight. And that's a pretty impressive feat for her. It certainly is. She will go down as one of the best head coaches in the state of Minnesota. We're going to head down to the sideline here in just a minute after the uh, pictures have been taken. Tori Holt standing down there with the victors and he'll have a player or two or coach or who knows what Tori will come up with. But we're going to look forward to that here on our postgame show and then much more coming up as well with Chris and Marissa and Jenny as analyze this and then get ready for game number four on the day Kennedy and Hopkins that should be a dandy those two teams that met earlier this year yeah I'm expecting uh, an exciting game out of that last game of the evening let's go to let's go to Tori down along the sideline well I got a couple of stars of the game here we've seen them for a long time Tashana Johnson and Alina star uh, congratulations on your third title in a row uh, one of only three teams to ever do that I'll start out with you Tashana uh, five all tournament teams three championships uh, what does this one mean to you how special is this I think this is the most special one uh, leaving our senior year with a state ring is the most incredible feeling anyone can ask for how about to, how about to play with Alina Star for all this time and now you'll both go your separate ways off to college. I think it's it's a sad moment but again I know she'll do well at Auburn so I'm not really worried about so I'm good. <laughs> how about uh, in this game uh, both of you got into fall trouble but you were able to stick with it and, and play your best down the stretch. Um focus like a focus but I know what we had to do for the game fouls didn't mean anything we foul out we foul out what I did. <laughs> well congratulations go celebrate with your team. Thank you. Tashana Johnson what can you say about her as a teammate all this time oh my goodness she's such a great player um, I love playing with her I'm gonna miss it a lot um, but I know like she said she'll do well at Iowa State so I'm proud of her and glad I got to play with her how'd you feel as this one came down as you knew as you looked up you had the big lead the time was winding down it was your last time out in the court with your teammates here at De La Salle um, it's a bittersweet moment uh, caught butterflies um, I'm just happy uh, we're blessed um, three state titles um, been here five years in a row um, couldn't ask for more Lastly, uh, playing for Faith Johnson Patterson for so long, and obviously her numbers now with eight titles, she's one of the greatest ever. Coaches, just the numbers alone. What's it been like for playing with you, playing with her, or for her all this time? It's remarkable. It's it's a blessing. She's a great coach. Um, every player who's played with her knows that, and she takes you places and she pushes you to become the best player she know you can be. Congratulations. Good luck at Auburn. Thank you. All right, Alina Starr, Tyshawna Johnson. What a great career those two have had for De La Salle. They win three straight to go out here as seniors. Seniors. Hey, we got a long ways to go here on 45 TV at the Minnesota State High School Girls State Basketball Championships. Up next, it's a 4A title game, so stick around. Hopkins, they look for a three-peat as well. They'll take on Bloomington Kennedy. That's up next. So stay with us on 45 TV. Today's postgame show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Your dream is out there. Go get it. We'll protect it. Find out more at amfam.com. It is a free beat for the De La Salle Islanders. They win the Class 3A championship 65-50, to 50, joining a very elite sorority of girls basketball teams that have won three consecutive state championships here in the state of Minnesota. Thanks for staying with us here on 45 TV. We're between games. Chris Long with you courtside, along with Jenny Johnson and Marissa Layton. Jenny, your thoughts on that? And again, that, that three-peat club is a very, very elite club. 
And the fact that Faith Johnson Patterson coached both teams that did three-peat <laughs> is pretty amazing in itself. But today, with the quality of girls' basketball in the state, it's exceptionally hard, and it's an amazing feat. Marissa, your thoughts on that one? We were talking earlier, and I think no matter where Tyshawna Johnson and Alina Starr played, I think they're capable of that three-peat. What a great way for them to finish their careers. Give De La Salle credit. A lot of people said they were going to march through this bracket. Red Wing gave them a fight. This was a close game at halftime. Red Wing was in it. They're two stars, De La Salle, in foul trouble. And both Tisha Buck and Macy Kelly really kept Red Wing in this game. They really did, and, and Macy Kelly kind of lived up to expectations that we have for her coming into this tournament. 17 points. Aishana Johnson, though, closing out her high school career in style. What I like about these highlights are they really show who Tyshana Johnson is as a player. She doesn't just score a lot of points, but she does the little things, as you can see here. And that kind of thing is contagious across the whole team. She works hard, the whole team works hard. And the end result, a third straight state championship for the La Salle Islanders. Let's look at the game summary here. Jenny, your initial thoughts as we review the game statistically. Well, looking at the overall statistics for Tyshana Johnson, she ended up with 25 points, 12 rebounds, and five steals. And she really was, in my opinion, the player of the game. Marissa? You know what makes De La Salle so hard to beat is not only do they have one good player, they have two good players. Alina Starr finishing with 20 points and five rebounds. 20 offensive rebounds in the game as De La Salle wins 65 to 50, claiming a third straight state championship. We are moving on to the final game of the girls' basketball season here for the state of Minnesota. It is the 4A championship. Will we have another three-peater? Hopkins certainly hope so, but Bloomington Kennedy hoping to spoil those three-peat dreams for Hopkins. We will get you to the 4A championship game after this break here on 45 TV.